So I want to talk about cores and threads. So an AMD processor, that's just another manufacturer, lists a 4.7 gigahertz processor with eight cores. That means that you have eight distinct cores, each processing 4.7 billion instructions a second. So you have eight distinct units that are processing this information. That's incredibly powerful. Three, eight, 0.4 billion instructions a second, billions with a B. ENIAC, the first general purpose computer, ran at 100,000 instructions a second, just to put that into a little bit of perspective. And then we have threads, and a thread is essentially one core doing two things at once. This is something that AMD and Intel go back and forth on. AMD has more cores. Intel does multi-threading. They call it hyper-threading. It's basically you have one core that's able to process two instructions at once. And that's do more on that in a minute. So there are multiple types of threading, and this is another very, very in-depth area. Intel processors offer something called hyper-threading. Essentially, this is a hardware process where as the processor's going through instructions, it will kind of It'll be processing one instruction, it'll stick that one aside and start working on another one. Essentially each processor core can work on two things at once. It can be problematic if you have two processes that are looking at the same resource, but Intel has done a really good job of coding for that so it doesn't really come up anymore. Uh, the problem with threads and cores is that you have to have software written specifically to take advantage of the technology. So the problem is, say you bought uh, the new AMD processor that has eight cores, there's no guarantee you're going to have any software that's going to make use of all eight of those cores. The same thing with hyper-threading. You have to have software that's written to take advantage of those. Most modern software doesn't because it's hard. Writing code to take advantage of multi-threads and multiple cores is very, very challenging. Operating systems like Windows and OS X, they kind of take up some of this burden. Uh, the, the modern operating systems like Windows 8 and OS X, they do a really good job of making use of this kind of technology. Even with that, uh, and Macs are written to run on an Intel processor, so they're more focused on multiple threads. And Windows has to kind of juggle between the two because it doesn't know what system you're going to be running it on. Even still, anything over about four cores isn't going to gain you very much other than bragging rights because I don't know of any games right now that will use any more than four cores. I don't think most operating systems can address them. I mean, I think they, they will, but they take some tweaking. Uh, usually you have to be on a specialized Unix system in order to do that. But if you know, you're know you building a gaming rig because you want to go play Call of Duty or something with your friends, then you're going to get more street cred if you've got an eight core AMD processor with 32 gigs of RAM, it just trust me, this is stuff I used to do. Words. We all know what words are. There are things like the, cake, fish, apple, cat. But what we're talking about with a computer is word size, and that's how many bits a CPU can process at a time. So we talked about bits and bytes when we talked about memory and storage. So you know a bit is the as a it's a one or a zero on or off. It's the smallest unit of information in a computer. So an 8-bit processor can handle 8 bits. This means that they can address things up to 2 to the 8 locations or 256. Now what do I mean by that? Now what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is in order to access something in memory, the computer needs an address. It needs some place to go look. So each byte of information in RAM or in memory gets an address. If you have, so essentially what this means is an 8-bit processor can only access 256 bytes of information. So a 16-bit processor, like the super, was in the Super Nintendo, for those of you that remember that, can address 16 bits or 2 to the 16 or 65,536 locations. So you see it's significantly more space. So this can use a lot more memory. The, pro the instructions it can use can be much larger. And essentially the opcodes I talked about, those don't get bigger. So basically what this means is each process, each cycle, a bigger chunk of information is being processed. So 32-bit was the most common word size until recent years. So that's, of course, 32 bits, or 2 to the 32nd, 4,294,967,296 bits. This number is important. So do you remember when I mentioned that more than 4 gigabytes of RAM was silly? This is why. 
I'm going to talk about the 4 gigabyte of RAM problem. So 2 to the 32nd, or 4,294,967,296 bits. In order to use memory, a CPU needs to know where things are located. Each byte of RAM has an address. An address ranges from 0 to whatever your maximum memory size is. So 4 gigabytes of RAM would have roughly 4 billion addresses. But you can see how this is a problem. Anything bigger than, than this value isn't addressable by the CPU. It just doesn't have capacity for it. It can't see it. It can't address it. It can't count that high. It's sort of like if you try to count to 20 on your hands, not using binary, you run out of fingers. And that's essentially what's happening. You know, if you're trying to count to 4 billion on your hands, it's just not going to happen. You, you'll run out of space really fast. So you can kind of see why on a 32-bit system having more than 4 gigs of RAM would be ridiculous. So that brings us to 64-bit processors. That's what most modern computers have. They're a 64-bit processor, so of course that's 64 bits worth of information. So now we have this number. That's 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion, 73 billion, 709 million, 551,616 locations. And I'm not gonna say that again. So that's 18 exabytes of memory. We we're a few years away from this being a mainstream thing, so with 64-bit processors, just go ahead and throw as much RAM as you want in there, because you're not gonna, you're most likely not gonna hit this unless you're Google. So 64-bit processors, something fun to know. The iPhone 5S uses a 64-bit processor. A lot of the latest operating systems also make use of 64-bit processors. I don't think 128-bit processors will ever be a thing. That's based on how long we had 32-bit processors, how scalable 64-bit processors are, and how the areas of CPUs are progressing. I don't think bits as we know them will be a thing by the time 128-bit processors would be an option. That's something else for another time. So here are the references for this slide, uh, for these slides. If you want to look up anything that I talked about, that's all here. It's also in the reading.